Welcome to this FEI Coach Education webinar chat uh, with uh, Glenn Cronin, uh, coach of Shamrock Rovers, son Garrett Marr. Um, Glenn, you're back a couple of weeks now with Shamrock Rovers. Um, how have you found the whole process after coming back from the lockdown? Yeah, it's been strange, like, you know. Um, initially, when we got in, uh, protocol and, you know, everybody uh, in terms of getting tested every couple of days. So it was very different to what you're used to, but... Um, you know, suppose everybody was very respectful of it and understands the seriousness of it. So uh, it's been fine. It's been fine, really. Like you know, but uh, yeah, we've adapted. Yeah, well, as a coach, you you have to adapt your your sessions as well, don't you? How, how have you gone about that? Yeah. So initially, we had groups in of five. So it was a uh, again, it was just trying to do we walk our units? Do we walk in small numbers of midfielders and forwards? So and um, so we mixed it up uh, that way and. It worked well, to be fair. It's not what you want to do leading into any season, but that early. But it was, uh, it was, suppose it was good to work on individual stuff more than anything else. Like you know, improving players as individuals rather than your team. Like you know, how, how many groups would you have then? Small groups of players would you have like three or four or more? Yeah, we had four groups of five okay. um, early on, and uh, so four sessions we were, we were doing a day. So. Okay. Um, but it was grand. It was fine. Look, it was just great to be back. We were a long time off, so mm. you'd have stayed there all day if you could. Yeah, from, you know, from a coaching point of view, did that mean you had to have a coach per group? Yeah. Well, we kind of we had them in at different times, so we were always involved. Uh, our coaches, myself, well, all of us, the whole coach staff were in, um, with each group of five at a time. So yeah. Uh, so it worked fine. Look, like I said, everybody got what they needed, and um, it was fine. And obviously, I know the guys would have been doing their own personal stuff to kind of keep fit, you know, but it's different, isn't it, when you don't have a ball at your feet and you're you're not doing the kind of fast turns and, you know, acceleration, deceleration and stuff like that. How, how did you find that kind of stuff when you get back to the football fitness side of things? Yeah, well, we've seen it probably a bit more today when we could in, increase our numbers. Um, you know, when you come back into it, obviously there's a lot of twisting and turning that you can't do, they just couldn't do in this off-season. Um, yeah. So... Uh, so yeah, you just have to be wary of them and look at, we need to make sure that they're right and they're, we have to be clever in the sessions that we put on and make sure the rest, they get the proper rest and um, and nothing crazy too early because the last thing we need is, is people getting injured, like, you know, so, and but they felt that they would have felt the first few days like anybody else, I suppose, you know. It, it's, that's a, a real tough balance to find out and is it, you know, not going too heavy too early because they'll be so itching to get back into it, won't they? Like, you know, but you kind of have to say, just hold on a second, like, you know, calm down. Yeah, 100%. And I think it depends on your group, especially with this group. They just want to go, like, you know. So it's um, it's kind of talking to them and, um, you know, just trying to explain to them, listen, this is why. And, and they get it, like, you know, when, when you when we speak to them, they get it, like, you know, enough's enough today. And, um, you know, again, that it's hard for them because they're a long time off. And, and like I said, they just want to go. But that's what look, it's their job to manage that, isn't it? And just keep them chomping like what are we six weeks away now so mm. um, they get it like you know in terms of the social distance and how, how has that been obviously you're doing the sessions and they're broken down into smaller groups but the whole session all together you have to maintain the social distancing as well yeah so early on we um, especially our first first week we uh, so again small things like around those we had to change up in terms of how we uh, you, you couldn't tackle you know it might be an interception or um, we had to make them walk distances rather than so their angles would have been a little bit different just from a coaching point of view mm. um, obviously we wear masks as coaches and um, we still do now so just to just for player safety and um, and just keep making them conscious of it like you know just keep speaking to them keep their distance so we kind of in the training ground ourselves even as coaches before we leave the office it might be something from the manager to say, listen, we need to throw that out every two minutes, keep your distance, keep your distance. So yeah. um, it was constantly on your mind. But once you say it and just people just check, like players check to take a step back and go, no, look, you know, so it was, uh, it was definitely new to us. We normally, you want them getting after each other, we're kind of going the other way to take yeah. a step back, like, you know, so. Um, but it worked fine. It worked fine. It was, uh, like I said, it's been tough on everybody. So I think the last thing players want to do is take a step back now. So, and um, they were very respectful of it, like, you know. 
Is, is is it kind of like when you say the rondo there as well? Like, is it would you only have like one in the rondo in the middle there to intercept, and it's a, it's a, just a much more kind of compact area, or yeah. or do you enlarge the area more so? Yeah, so the area is probably a little bit bigger, and you have one in the middle, and it's an interception. So, um, and then you know players just walk different rather than being on top of each other. Their angles would have been different. So, um, and I walked fine, and they get it, like they got it, you know. So, um, look, like you said at the start, it's about just adapting and thinking a little bit outside the box at the start and yeah. uh, and look it's a nice little challenge for coaches isn't it we suppose this time it, it, it is and th- that, that's something from a coaching perspective isn't it like you know just um, yeah you, you have to adapt all the time to different challenges all the time and this is something that we're all unfamiliar with but as you say you just have to get on with it 100% and, and we've enjoyed it sitting down and you know is it doable is it not doable like anything else we suppose look it's a uh, it was it was good. It was a nice little challenge in time, especially the first couple of weeks because we, we did have to think outside the box and um, and then you're seeing the play, the players react to it and, and they really enjoyed the first sessions because um, it was more individual stuff and um, you know you, you feel like you're improving the player rather than you know you probably don't get as much time during the season to do stuff like that. So um, so it was good. It was good in that sense. It's almost obviously you're working at a professional level, like with high level players. So is that nearly almost come back to basics by doing? And is that something that you'd almost encourage grassroots coaches to do with the, you know, as they come back during this period? Hundred percent. I think, especially kids. Anyway, like you know, um, I think at that level, it's all it's all for me about the individual. It's about that kid. It's about the kids. So it's uh, it's not so much about winning. It's about or you still have to set your team up. Don't get me wrong, as a coach, and because you want to get where you want to get there as a as a coach yourself so you want to improve and be better at things but ultimately it's about the kid isn't it at that age so yeah. um, if you have time now in your small groups to improve individuals well, there's no better time than now to do that like you know you get but time particularly if we know that returning to games is still a little bit off you know so that we ha- we can utilise this time to you know work on passing sessions control controlling the ball technique as you say definitely this is it this is the time to do it so the way I look at it, we can take it as a negative or a positive. So you can now take this time, really break down, like what we did in the, in the time off, really break down our players' games. And, and when we get back, we, we hit the ground running in terms of improving them as individuals. So um, it'll definitely stand up. So there's no different at grassroots, grassroots level where you've watched a team, you know, you know at that age what a player needs. So this is your time now to go and implement have you have you been kind of been mindful of mixing technical versus conditioning as well because it is a it is a preseason of sorts for you like yeah no definitely like I said early on there's probably them small groups are probably not how we want to train and um, so uh, we had to be very mindful of that and and um, but we broke her up uh, with with tactical days which we could like I said if you went you and walk or and um, so a bit of condition with the smaller stuff and then into unit work which could could break it up for you so um so yeah look at again we have to we still have to get a work in like that we can still improve the, improve the individual and if you get time then to work on the tactical side of it which you can right now then we'll do it like you know we've done it in a funny way because like i know it's different for you because obviously the, the league of world season started just a couple of games then we had the break with the with the lockdown and now you're back into it it, it kind of gives you a good way to assess how you started and what way you want to kind of progress now from now on as well, doesn't it? Like in, in terms of, okay, we started that way, here's things that we can fix and correct and now we can sharp it up now. Definitely. Look, we're always, I know it's a cliche, we're always learning, like, you know, so um, we're always looking to get better. But uh, you win training in on a Friday night, you're in Saturday looking to try and get better. How can we improve it? So, yeah. Um, so there's no different there, and that's what we we've, we've done in our off time basically is look back in opposition and how we can improve our players and um because it's our job. So uh yeah, so it was good in that sense, how can we get stronger again and what can we do better? And um, and we found look at loads we can do better. So um so it's a great chance now to go and do it. Have you have you taken much from watching the games on TV from around the world, like the Bundesliga or the Premier League? Obviously, you know, the, the pace and intensity mightn't be there, which is understandable, like, you know, straight away. But have you taken some of those things into consideration? Yeah, definitely. I think we, one of the big things that stood out for me was the amount of injuries 
um, in Germany. So as you said earlier, we have to be so conscious of that, like coming back that we give them time and um, the rest time in between is so important or uh, whether it's a day off here or whatever it is, we have to be so conscious of that and how we train. Like I'd, mm. I'd imagine in Germany, they got, I know they got less uh, time to come back. So, um, is the reason why they've had injuries. So we'll have a longer run in. So it's important. I'd imagine they rushed into small things or rushed into a different way of training where uh, we have time now to really assess that and, and plan it the best we can, like, you know. One of, the, one of the curious things that's happened, certainly watching the English Premier League, is where the ball has to be disinfected all the time. So they have, instead of ball kits around, they'll have balls all around the pitch and all. Yeah. I was just wonder from a coach's point of view, like that almost encourages you to kind of get going again quite quickly. Like, you know, sometimes it's showing you might want to slow it down, like rather than quickly. Yeah, yeah no, look, I suppose depends. <laughs> You're winning or losing, doesn't it? Like, you know, so, um, no, again, we wouldn't have much on us in terms of what we do, you know, um, just on the disinfecting, just something to touch on as well. We wear our own stuff in between sessions in our groups of fives. It's everything's disinfected in between, like you know. So the one five on, the next five is in, and everything footballs, cones, bibs aren't used, bibs are washed. We have a next set of bibs coming in, so and um, so the same is happening here. I'm saying um, and and that's obviously important. But in terms of speeding it up or slowing it down, I don't think it for us it make much of a difference, like you know. That disinfecting period is that something that you take on as coaches, or do the players get involved in in kind of doing that as well? Yeah, well, we've a, a groundsman. Uh, we're lucky enough to have up there John Craig and every day, and John uh, walks around with his backpack on and his disinfectant, and so everything we put it into an area, and he just goes and uh, disinfects it all, and then we go and set up them for the afternoon session or that session later that morning or whatever it is, and uh, so it's just important all the kick goes back into the same area, all gets disinfected, and then ready to go again, like you know. How important as a coach is communication as part of all this, like to communicate? you know, to explain to players why we're doing this, you know, and as you you already said as well, that you have to kind of give them little reminders every every now and again as well. You know, it's huge. Look, it's huge. We've obviously done loads of meetings through Zoom uh, through the difficult times and um, and we just knew we had to be right for when we got back because we know people are working so hard to get it back behind the scenes. So it was kind of, we won't be the ones to let them down if, do you know how we were <laughs> So we, we wanted to make sure everything we did air part because we know people are working hard to get it back. So, um, so in that sense, we loads of meetings and uh, in terms of speaking to the players, it's massive. Like that communication, even like I said, it might be member staff saying something to me, take a step back, or and we just have to accept it. it's fine. Like you know, so. Um, but yeah, no, it's a huge part of it. But once they understand, look, I think this has been so difficult that. No one wants to challenge you, do they? So it's yeah. it's fine, you know. If you're told to take a step back or told not to tackle, you just you don't tackle, like, and you take a step back, you know. Yeah, um, so you it's fine. Not really, you know, been a challenge as, as as a coach as well. Has it been a challenge that you've enjoyed? Loved it, absolutely loved it. I think I don't know. Listen, I love being on the pitch anyway. I, you know, I just love it, like you know. So, um, I think. Uh, Definitely love the challenge. I don't know it's because we were locked down for so long that you're just eager to get back out into the pitch and, and get around people and coaching and um, and especially with the information you've probably gathered uh, in this time off that you just want to get around and brainstorm with with the manager and everyone else and uh, so yeah no absolutely loved it like you know I know it's been difficult times but to get back on the pitch now is it's like Christmas morning before it's morning you know yeah just finally Glenn is. You know, from what you've experienced during this, I know you're kind of getting ready now to, like, you know, move back into games and 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 that. But what you've experienced during all this on the return, is there something that you'd recommend to coaches as they're preparing to do the same now? Yeah, I suppose it's just, you know, well, the big thing for me is I don't take for granted what you're doing. Like, you know, like that strip everything back. We've had a chance to look to really strip everything back. Because sometimes you can get caught up in the in, in the hustle and bustle of being a coach like without without really affecting people like you know so I think for me looking back and really analysing our players and whether it be small little things whether it's a body shape thing or whether it's a it's a, a touch in the same direction or whatever it is um, really take the time to to master them little things and if you improve them with them little bits it's job done because like, I think now 
coaches and get wrapped up in. And like it's always been the same. I'm sure I'm winning and you know saying I'm my team under 11s won this weekend. Where, but I'd rather give me like you know in 10 years time I've produced 10 players to play for Ireland now. So that's the bigger picture for me. Like you know, but um, but that's it really. Just don't get caught up in it. Just break it, strip it right back, and really improve the kids. Like you know, our players at any level. You know, because we we're doing it at, at this level here now and. And um, so it can be done at, you know, really strip it back and improve players. Awesome. Glenn, really appreciate your time. Great insights. Okay. And uh, obviously best of luck going forward into the second part of your season, or the new season, as we would say. Yes. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. Great talking to you.